So Amazon Game Studios is finally making some moves with Throne of Liberty and the closed beta NDA test is just a few days away on the 10th. And I wanted to make this quick video for you guys to not only share my thoughts on the game, also offer you guys a little bit of advice and my recommendations for those of you who may be playing the game for the first time. I also want to let you guys know that we do have a lot of keys to give away to our guild communities. Throne of Liberty is a game that heavily revolves around guilds. And while AGS has given away some keys to just random people, they have given away a lot of keys to focused, organized groups, guilds, in order to fully test their game because Throne Liberty just simply revolves around guilds. So we are one of the guilds that AGS has reached out to. We have a lot of keys that we can give out to our guild community. So if you are looking for a guild community, if you weren't able to snag a key, you're more than welcome to join our community and Hopefully we can provide you with a key, but obviously I can't guarantee anything because if I put this YouTube video out, there's going to be a lot of people that, that do come in. But regardless, if you're excited to play the game, I would highly recommend joining our Discord community. It's filled with a bunch of people that are very knowledgeable about the game and, and very friendly as well. Non-toxic environment, just filled with a bunch of gamers that are both excited about the game and very experienced with the game as well. A lot of us have played this game extensively. We took the first castle in KR, and a lot of us would be more than happy to share our knowledge with you guys. So uh, feel free to ask any questions, seek, for, seek any help. We've got a pretty big throne community in our Discord, so definitely come join us there. A lot of people have been asking me what are my thoughts on the game, and I know I haven't put out a YouTube video a review on the game yet. I was kind of waiting a little bit closer to launch, but another reason why I, I didn't yet was because the game was continually evolving and uh, NCSoft has done a pretty good job updating their game. If you look at their game objectively and you just look at the game for what it is, the content that's in it, right? And you even take away monetization. The game is actually a pretty good game. It really is. If you're a PVP guy, this will 100% scratch your itch. And, the, and, and honestly, the PVE that's in the game, some of the dungeons that you do in the game is also really, really good. So uh, if, if you're a PVP guy, if you like open world, if you like if games that focus on guilds and is a little competitive, this is definitely going to be your game. So let's address the elephant in the room first. Is the game pay to win? How pay to win is it? I heard it's pay to win trash. It's NCSoft. And the answer is it is pay to win. It is absolutely pay to win. And you will absolutely have a big advantage if you are a will. However, the gaps I would say are not that big between free to play and pay to win. And the game, to be perfectly honest, is objectively less pay to win now than it was at launch. It's actually become less pay to win. Which is kind of crazy considering it's NC soft and how is it less pay to win? Well, they added more best in slot items that are obtainable through dungeons free to play. I think the pay to win system will absolutely give you a big advantage in Throne Liberty, but the gaps aren't that big simply because there is a cap to your gear in, in Throne Liberty and they still haven't raised that cap. If you're a free to play player from day one in the KR servers, you've hit that cap and Lucent allows you to get to that cap faster, essentially, right? And this is the KR version. We don't know how the NA version is going to be. I know systematically it's going to be the same, but we don't know how easy it is going, it, easy it will be to get this premium currency because this premium currency is actually gold. It, it's like purchasing gold in other games because you, you are actually farming this premium currency in the game. So it's not just exclusive to purchasing with cash. You can purchase, you can, you can grind out this currency within the game itself. So not only do you have caps on your gear, but also the gear pieces that you are going for that are best in slot, um, you, you, you mainly get them through your guilds, uh, and you can get them through the auction house via Lucent, uh, but you could also farm that gear, but also almost every single best in slot piece of gear is accessible uh through through dungeons now that that's pretty much the direction that they've gone and some best in slot pieces you have to get only via dungeons you you can't actually swipe for those pieces of gear right so you have a you have a game where it is systematically very pay to win but there are caps in place in your gear so you can't go up beyond that that gear cap purple plus 12 okay for those of you who've played the game that's it you, you can't go beyond will they re raise that cap absolutely how fast they raise that cap will also affect the levels of pay to win, but they haven't raised it yet, even in Korea. 
uh, months after the game has already released. Uh, I want to say it's April 4, 5, 5 months now, almost half a year they haven't released, they haven't increased that cap yet versus like games like Lost Ark where, they, where they're constantly pushing that ceiling higher. And some of the best in slot pieces you can actually swipe for and almost all the best in slot pieces you have to uh, you can grind for in in, in dungeons uh and you can get the lucent uh, currency in the uh in the, you can grind it out within the game so uh that said if there's feedback that i was going to give back to ags it, that feedback one of the things that i would say is to make lucent more accessible for free to play players and i know that's going to impact the economy and the pricing and stuff pr pricing on goods but it's just, in my personal opinion, it was getting to be a little bit too difficult to grind out Lucent. You can absolutely grind out Lucent, but the amount of Lucent that you can grind out compared to how much some of these best in slot pieces were, uh, I feel like that gap was a little bit too big in the early stages of the game. However, that was also kind of remedied by simply moving those best in slot pieces to be grinded out via, or to be able to be grinded out via dungeon. So they did kind of address that, but you know, these are just my honest thoughts off the top of my head. No script, it's just full transparency. That's how I feel about the pay to win. If you're looking for PVE content, it's kind of interesting because Throne absolutely is a PVP centric game. It's like a Throne simulator. The game revolves around open world, guild versus guild PVP. However, the PVE in this game is actually really good. The dungeons are well made. The mechanics are pretty intuitive. And they've even added these dungeons that they've had to nerf the latest dungeons in kr that are insanely difficult people progging these dungeons but obviously it's just not the highlight of the game i i, I would love to see nc soft continue to put a bigger focus on pve uh but that's even kind of unfair because they they actually are and and the the dungeons are are quite good as well so um that's yeah that's probably the best way i could put it the game is simply a pvp focused game but it, it's it's got pretty solid pve as well obviously not a raid focused game like lost ark but pretty solid in my opinion when it comes to large scale the version that we're going to be getting most likely will be uh, quite different from the version that we got in kr because the version we got in kr there was no instance when it came to open world pvp there's no system in place that that um created equal fights it was just a open world it was like a sandbox right you could show up with a thousand people you could show up with with 20 people and they've changed that now uh where that's only going to be essentially experienced through certain content like siege and tax delivery everything else will be controlled it, it will be in a more controlled environment where you have like 1v1s against guilds with a set number of uh, of members you know 50 versus 50 60 versus 60 a type of situation depending on how, how many people are in are in your guild and, and as someone that has played this game extensively, I will tell you that that is a big W. I know some of you guys are probably thinking, no, you know, I want a true open world experience. It's just not a very good system in practice. It, it really isn't. What you end up getting is you get massive Zergs, uh, everyone just stacking onto one alliance or on onto two alliances, and it just becomes... It, just a shit show right it's it's literally if you're if you're not on red or blue team you, like you're you're irrelevant you can't even play the game that's what it ends up turning into and, and that's just not a good system in my opinion i think the node war system for for bdo is pretty good and and this is they are essentially kind of adopting that type of system into their node wars but they're still keeping that large anything goes system for their a large scale pinnacle content like siege the last thing that I want to share my thoughts on is actually the body issue with Throne Liberty. A lot of people was concerned, uh, was concerned with the pay to win systems and how that's going to kill the game. And to be perfectly honest, especially with how big the gaps are in Throne Liberty, the bigger issue is hands down the botting. Now, botting is just never going to go away in any MMO, especially a free to play MMO. Like I, I get that, right? But I'm really hoping that AGS does a better job punishing players that are at the top of the leaderboards. Uh, guilds right because this is not your typical pve game theme park game this is a game where a lot of the content is player driven a lot of the content focuses around rankings and pvp and, and just taking the throne and if you have people that are significant to the story of the server that are blatantly cheating it just kills the integrity of everything right so um, I'm really hoping that a Amazon does a better job than NC Soft does when it comes to punishing at least the ranked players that are on the leaderboards, the significant players or the, uh, 
uh, key players on the servers uh, when it comes to abuse, gameplay abuse. But I recognize that botting in general just, just won't really go away. And it's just something that's always going to be a never ending battle between the devs and and the and the botters so uh with that said ncsoft did recently implement a new system that uh is kind of like an anti-bot system where it kills your character if you're kind of trait if your playstyle pattern is 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 triggering their system and they recognize it to be like an afk script or a bot or whatever and, and th these are definitely big steps in the right direction and i applaud ncsoft for that but where i feel like ncsoft kind of dropped the ball with the botting is they just they didn't really punish players that were on the leaderboards at the very least. And I have spoken with some of the people from the Amazon team and uh, they have told me that they were going to be more aggressive when it comes to punishing those types of players. So we'll just we'll just have to see. So with all that out the way, I do want to provide you guys with a little bit of advice if it is your first time playing the game. And the first thing that I would tell you guys is to really make sure you figure out what class you want to play. Take advantage of this time and opportunity that you have to test out different classes and all that stuff. Of course, there's going to be a lot of wars and you're going to want to go out there and gear up and 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 and, and shit on kids, whatever. But it, I think it's way more important for you to test out different weapons and, and play styles and really figure out what you want to play for the Western launch because you will have to invest into a certain weapon set and you're not going to want to re-roll when the game comes out. Believe me, you will not. So uh, definitely take advantage of this opportunity to really figure out the play style that you want to play. On top of that, also try to figure out what build that you want to go, what equipment pieces that you want to go. There are a lot of options that you could that you have when it comes to gearing out your character depending on the spec that you choose and again once you start investing in some of these items especially if you're free to play you're not going to want to re-roll off of these until like way way later until after you have uh you know everything pretty much set you've hit your caps and 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 uh, you're you're ready to move on to the next stage right you will not want to be making these adjustments at the launch of the game when you're when, when prices are inflated and everyone's trying to, to to get geared up quickly you know that initial launch rush you're not going to want to re-roll so just definitely try to figure out what class you want to play and what builds you want to go as far as the builds and these weapon types go I will say that if you're looking or interested in playing the wand, the wand is fantastic for support. Obviously, support and, and PvP is extremely important, uh, but wands are actually really good for large scale uh, AOE damage as well, to the point where in the early days, we wanted as many DPS wand users as possible because you can get these mass AOE sleeps and, and curses off and you can just curse bomb the shit out of guilds and a lot of the war strategies actually revolved around this so a wand is absolutely a great weapon to use whether it's offensively for aoe bombs or for uh or for support uh damage and healing scale off the same stat by the way so that's pretty cool but keep in mind the wand is not a high dps weapon it's big burst right you have a cooldown that you incur so it really 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 works when you have a lot of wand users in a group environment but if you're thinking about going out there and just soloing groups of people over and over and over again with no cooldown that that's not that's not going to happen the most important role in throne of liberty absolutely is the frontline tank uh these tanks are not only used in pve dungeons but they're also used in pvp large scale and they are extremely strong sword and board sword shield is is just very strong in throne of liberty the only downside with sword and board though is that you're not going to be able to place very well in events effectively making it more difficult for you to grind out your gear and make money however ncsoft has made some changes over time to alleviate that but it's you're just always going to be behind dps when it comes to actually making gains we literally took our seat first castle largely in part of a tank strategy that we implemented so tanks are just really really important and they're really strong and by the way great sword sword shield users i, I would say is very similar to like an abolisher class in um vanilla arc age 
you actually deal quite a bit of damage because of scaling late game in the early game you're not going to do any damage as a tank but in the end game late game you will actually start to be able to deal damage on top of your tanking abilities they have nerfed tanks i'm not going to go into certain skills or spells that they've nerfed because a lot of you guys that are listening to this vice it's not you're not going to know those skills anyways but they have nerfed sword and shield but it's still just insanely strong and it's still absolutely the most important role on the battlefield melee dps is something that a lot of people are going to play and and as a melee dps expect in large scale battles to not be in the fight quite a bit right like when you have a big blob that's there there's not much you can do if you're if your job is to hold a certain position and you have to stay in the back line and your back line isn't really being jumped on you could be playing in a roaming group uh, and that's a little bit more fun but melee dps is a is a role that scales better with time to the point where it becomes extremely strong you hard counter ranged you hard counter healers you just blow people up you can literally one shot people two shot people in the late game and you do have a stealth like ninja like survivability in place too so it's not like you're just melee dps you can blow up someone and then you just die you do also have the ability to escape along with your burst but it's just obviously a little bit more ping sensitive and you've got to be very good and your timing has to be very good in order to do so uh tldr melee dps kind of sucks actually probably arguably the worst to play in the early game i'm talking about pvp that is uh, and then they scale very very well in the late game and last we have range dps and range dps is a spec that really shines in the early game uh, and i don't want to say they really fall off signif significantly significantly excuse me in the end game but they they certainly do to a certain extent simply because a melee dps which is their their counter they scale a lot better now things start to change when you start getting access to arc boss weapons and you get these different procs and stuff and we, we also don't know what other sets are in the future that could potentially help range dps but for the most part tldr range dps you, you could expect to be able to deal damage to the back line you do deal a lot of damage you're going to be able to solo farm very very well um however you are prone to getting caught you're very squishy you're gonna get blown up when you do get caught it's a rewarding class but it's a punishing class as well that's probably the best way that i could put it that's pretty much it guys um i hope you found that helpful or insightful at the very least if you have any questions if you want to join the community again join our discord come follow me on twitch i'm gonna start streaming throwing liberty a little bit more again uh and it's i'm just excited to get back into it i will personally be playing in the closed beta test a little bit but most of my gameplay hours are probably going to continue to be on the kr server but i but i will definitely dabble in the uh, tech test just to be able to see or the nda test rather to be able to see see the differences so don't forget to like and subscribe let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below and have fun in the closed beta test